this kind of piggybacks off what we're doing with the production possibilities curve. It uh, uses the PPC to kind of get our information, okay? And it deals with specialization, trading, and it shows us how we can get outside our production possibilities curve. This is mostly going to focus on how to solve comparative advantage. We will do a bunch of practice on Friday, but this is just going to kind of go through some of the basics, okay? So free trade, right? This is sort of something that's been in the news a lot lately. This has been one of sort of Donald Trump's pet ideas, this idea of free trade. And the, the overall idea is that if two countries have differing opportunity costs, there's a chance that they can both benefit from trading with each other, okay? And I'll talk to you Friday. Almost every economist uh, will tell you that free trade is a good thing. Doesn't mean that every single aspect of it is good, right? There need to be some things that take place in order to mitigate some of the issues, but almost to an economist, they will tell you free trade is beneficial. So let's look at some of these ideas we can think about, right? Think about where you get your clothes. Um, think about where you get your food. Um, think about uh, anything that you use. Why aren't you doing this all on your own, okay? Um, and the reason is because... Right? You can do the things that you're good at, while other people can do the things they're good at, and we can come together and trade those things. Okay? So right now your job is to be a student. You focus on that and let other people do the things they're good at, and uh, everyone becomes better off because of this. Okay? This is the idea on gains from trade. Was there a question or no? Okay. Um, so let's look at how we solve and how we look at comparative advantage problems. So there's two types of problems. There's an input problem and an output problem. You need to be able to solve both. Um, I think output problems are generally more common. They're very easy to solve. They're similar, but there are some small differences. So... Output problems deal with final products, things that are tangible, things that you can get your hands on. Cars, boats, beer, wine, wheat, corn, books, you name it, okay? Input problems go with the things that go into creating the final products. These things are intangible. So an input problem would ask, how many hours does it take to make a car? How many days does it take to paint a house? How many acres does it take to grow wheat? Those are the differences rather than the final product. The little mnemonic device to solving an output problem, and I'll go over this on the next slide, other goes over. Okay? And there's only one other place to be. If you can't go over, you can go under. So to solve an input problem, it's other goes under, okay? And I'm, we're going to look at an output problem here in a second, um, but they're, they're very similar to deal with. So let's take a look at this. Um, and again, you don't need to copy this down necessarily, right? This example here is in the Krugman book, right? We're going to look at Tom and Hank and coconuts and fishing, all right? So for a long time, people only talked about absolute advantage. The absolute advantage is easy to distinguish, right? Whoever can produce more, whoever can make more, they have the absolute advantage, okay? But then there was an economist named Dave Ricardo, and he came along and said, well, that's not what's important, right? A bigger country is always going to have the absolute advantage. What's important is... Not who can make the most, but who can make the most with giving up the least. And that's where opportunity cost comes in. So we want to look at who has the lowest opportunity cost. So here's how you set up 
a comparative advantage problem. There's a lot of ways to set it up. Here's how I like to set it up, okay? So we're going to look at how many fish and how many coconuts each one can gather um, based on the production possibility curves. So Tom, he can get 40 fish or 30 coconuts. Hank can get 10 fish or 20 coconuts. So we'll first look at the absolute advantage, right? Out of, in fish, Tom can get 40, Hank can get 10. Tom has the absolute advantage. Tom can get 30 coconuts and Hank can get 20. Tom also has the absolute advantage. So it's important to know absolute advantage, but it doesn't really tell us much when it comes to trade and specialization. So now, first thing to think about, is this an output problem or an input problem? Well, we're talking about the final product. We're talking about fish and coconuts. So it's an output problem. So other goes over. So I want to know every time Tom catches a fish, how many coconuts is he going to give up? So if I'm talking about fish, coconuts is the other one. So the other one is going to go over fish. So 30 over 40, every time Tom catches a fish, he's giving up the chance to get three-fourths of a coconut. And then every time Tom picks a coconut, what is he giving up? Other, we're talking about coconuts. Fish is the other one. Other goes over. So every time Tom picks a coconut, he's giving up four-thirds of a fish. Now, you guys should see a pattern right there immediately. Every single time, the two opportunity costs are going to be the inverse of each other. So that's something right off the bat. You should be able to look at that and say, if I didn't get the inverse, let me back it up, see if I've done something wrong. Let's look at Hank. If we're talking about fish, every time he catches a fish, how many coconuts is he giving up? Coconuts is the other one. Other goes over. Every time he picks one or catches one fish, he's giving up two coconuts. And so without even thinking about it, we know that the other one is going to be, say it to yourself, one half. I like to put the one equals there. And we'll talk about that on Friday because it helps me see the terms of trade a little bit easier. Now, we want to look at how do we know who can do this better? Whoever has the lower opportunity cost. So if we're looking at fish, every time Tom catches a fish, he only has to give up three quarters of a coconut. When Hank catches a fish, he is giving up two coconuts. So Tom has the comparative advantage in fish. And if we look at coconuts, one half is less than four thirds. So Hank has the comparative advantage in coconuts. This is another helpful hint. While Tom has the absolute advantage in both, you cannot have the comparative advantage in both. If you have the comparative advantage in one, the other person must have the comparative advantage in the other. Now, what does this tell us? This tells us that Tom would be smart to put all of his resources towards fish, and Hank would be smart to put all of his resources towards coconuts. And if they can work out a terms of trade that is beneficial for both of them, they should trade with each other, and both of them will be better off. Okay? We will talk about that next step on Friday. But I just wanted to go through the steps on how to figure out comparative advantage. So the way it works is you find out the per unit opportunity cost. You figure out whose is lower. Whoever has the lower opportunity cost, that tells us who should specialize when you specialize, that means you put all of your resources towards one. So Tom is going to make 40 fish and zero coconuts, and Hank is going to pick 20 coconuts and not catch any fish. And then we'll talk Friday about how to um, 
figure out terms of trade. Any questions? Now, real quick, these next two slides are going to be, if you go into the PowerPoint or the lecture, you can pause them and you can practice them if you want to. So I'm going to go to this slide for a minute. And then if you watch the video, you can end up pausing it. And then I'm going to put this next slide for a minute that you can pause and practice. But we'll have plenty of practice to do on Friday. Right? You'll have lots of opportunities to do this. And after you do a couple of them, you'll be like, piece of cake. This is no problem. And that is...